um, you know, something you're going to be working on a lot is this index finger positioning. And a little bit of it will be misleading because uh, you're building up finger strength as you work on this. So what we're always going for is I'm in good position trying to push down as opposed to I'm in some position where I can wrestle my hand into doing it with my current hand strength and we'll see if it all works out. Um, chiefly what we talked about is getting this part of our finger involved, not just one, two knuckles of available, but one, two, three knuckles. That's the only part of our hand that can go flat. So I've actually made little pen marks where I'm, um, where I'm fretting the high strings. And when we, we saw when you were doing this C, C7 that when you just went absurdly high with it, it worked the first time. So either way, uh, the goal is going to be not to have the indentation on your knuckle fall right atop any of the strings that we're trying to bar. But regardless, what I'm doing is just pushing my finger flat as an MF. And that's something you need to be, rather than doing this, which is putting our whole weight over there, oh. trying it out from you know, this position. Even, you could even just play power chord and then see if the rest was working out accordingly. But either way, that's what we're doing, is playing bar chords. That's pretty much all I just said. So hey, we've got this G chord, we've got G major, um, where the same thing will be true. And we talked about what we're going to do to free up our pinky to be playing riffs uh, using kind of our standard E shape stuff, but up here. And that's going to be as follows. Pinky comes up, ring finger moves down to the fourth string so that we can go. And uh, one of the sounds we're going to be trying to avoid is going, hitting the fifth string by accident, um, which we talked about is this... Uh, could get away from the instrument, bass picking movement. Uh, of course, we're going to lay it up with so much attack down before it strikes the uh, fifth string. And that's mirrored in our high string positioning, where our goal is to you know, be in this curled position where we're picking away, away, up, up, up. Um, so I'd love this to be the week where you stop uh, being tempted to use an approach of just two fingers um, on strings one and two, and then kind of resituate it. And just going one, two, three, I'm playing guitar, you know, uh, starting position. And I don't know that is occurring for you on a subconscious level when it does. But yeah, at some point I think you thought maybe I'll be a three finger picker or putting your pinky here made that be what happened. But yeah, so, you know, it turns out we're going to go ahead and use the, the ring finger too. And uh, most of the time it's as straightforward as thumb for these three strings. These three hanging out there. Cool, so here's our G7 chord. Let's pick you on the second string, sixth fret. And our first thing goes, those are the first two beats, just bass note. And then we go, pinky comes up. That was one, two, three, and four. And you'll feel some shift in your weight when you do that. Um, you can shift your weight back towards your index finger, but it shouldn't be considerable. It should really just be one position. Great. There's the first two measures. Uh, try not to loop it. Just go for one good. And there's going to be a certain amount of your hand getting tired, being the thing that's the problem. So in your practice, um, it's you know you're exerting yourself. It's physical exertion. You try to play it through the pain, but not to the, the point where it's not even time well spent anymore. Uh, so if you find yourself going, you know, hitting click notes again, our goal is just to be in good position, pushing down. And if we get the note, boy for us, if we don't, all good. As opposed to finding some vice grip, kind of in the meantime way. So that's what we're doing then. For our, in the first measure of the song, this G7 resolving to G. And then in the pursuit of making this song super easy, I made the second riff the exact same occurrence, just pinky on the, on the first string, like if you were going in the first position. So we just went, and now we're going. So everything's identical about it, pinky up here. first one. There we are. And that's what we're going to be doing for our G7. 
Archie. So we do that a couple of times. Section stop. Get good at that. Five minutes into your video, we're going to switch to our C7 shape, which is like this A7 in first position. Um, so we're going to be doing that with our ring and pinky. So it'll be like, you know, I tap this out over on the side. We have third fret, fifth fret, third fret. So that's one of the notes we're barring. Like that. And we're picking this on purpose to sort of force the issue with your index finger. You're going to need to be barring strings one, excuse me, one, three and five successfully, so that'll be a really flat finger. That's what we're doing. So, so that finger can match, you can use that for helping the bar, right? Your middle finger. Yeah, sure, but that's a... That, that, that's me just resting it comfortably at rest, right. uh, putting it comfortably at rest there, I'm not actually using it, but yeah, you can. That said, uh, setting out to do that will probably lead to this part of your hand doing weird stuff. So pretend I'm just doing the clock to flip a bird, and you're he really, he's always like, he's always playing his bar chords, where he's like, you know, that or something, or his power chords, rather. So hey, we did that on purpose to really articulate single notes and force the issue with the... So yeah, I'm going bass, high, bass, high, and then after that just boom, boom. So the trip on your right hand is going to be not putting your fingers back on the strings, thinking about using them like picks, where we're going to keep the notes ringing out, you know, still hanging out above the strings ready to attack, um, and that's how we always play. We never want to actually go, you know putting our fingers back there to dampen them, aside from like slide guitar and certain advanced dampen situations. Oh yeah, that's, and that's why we're, we picked this position, not this or something, so we can just hover right there ready to strike. So yeah. And we didn't even try to hit the first string. Um, and then there we are, so that's our show. get to that point in your sight, you could just go D7, or whatever works for you. I'm just playing D7 in your first position. Or you could do D7 using the C7 chord shape here, which one you might have had come up in a, in a blues already. Or you could just play D, whatever. Um, and, you know, just any kind of... It's always fine to go fifth string, fourth string as your bass line when you're playing D chords. It sounds fine when we're playing D if we hit the fifth string by accident. It sounds fine. A is actually a chord tone, but if we hit the sixth string, it's not so much anymore. So here we're deliberately playing that. And yeah, so you know, you can just whatever you want to do for your D. But what we're doing there is the same as the shape that we were playing just a moment ago, but up here we're on the 5th, 7th fret. Either way, if you get to this point in the song, you should be really proficient at the stuff on the page, and then just pick some kind of random, you know, start improvising as much as you want to, you get what's going on, you need like 5 chord, 4 chord, and then you can play the stuff on the top line again, or just do it all around, but there we are, we're mostly just working on dexterity, um, key concepts again, not resting your hand back on the strings and uh, you know figuring out where to position your index finger. Your thumb's gonna be dead center, not up a little higher, where which is more what we're all used to. And that's a lot of what's making this seem difficult is wanting to have your thumb slightly higher than it needs to be. Reminder: a way to trick yourself into getting into the good position is to go four fingers all chilling on the bass string like that, and then start fretting your bar chords from there. Given our first finger is going to be up a little higher, that'll get your thumb into the right juxtaposition. We're more out in front of the instrument, so there we are. In conclusion, if you're having issues, you can try that. And uh, yeah, if your hand gets tired, you could also just like throw the capo on the third fret and go. And be working on the right hand concepts okay. that we are already. Uh, and it would be even a little less forgiving to the open strings.